I hope we're back. Um, I'm not sure. I was checking uh, the previous broadcast to see if we made it onto the Facebook page, but it looked like we hadn't. So I restarted. And since it's a little bit of a late start, I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to do the centering exercise again uh, for now. And it still looks like we're not showing up on the Facebook page. I don't understand what's going on there. Anyway, um, maybe I will record this just in case. So we'll see what happens. Um, okay. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're talking about the emperor has no clothes. And I don't know if you guys are seeing this, which is pretty funny, actually, that um, it's not showing up on the Facebook page this morning, uh, given this topic. But um, what, what we're talking about this morning is the fact that there are so many conventions that we live by that we never question and that are really truly absurd like we we accept the notion that um of course there's poverty in the world of course there's hunger in the world um we accept the notion that um that we keep we keep secrets in our families, you know, because we want to um, avoid shame, avoid um, avoid judgment of others. So um, I, I know situations where people have suffered abuse within the context of family and it becomes this deep dark secret where people within the family don't even discuss it or don't let it be known even within the family let alone outside the family you know we keep our we keep our own secrets um there there's an absurdity to so many of of the conventions that we accept. And where this came up for me most recently was in looking at some of the laws that we have uh, around ownership, for instance, of water. So um, you may not be aware, but in, in most cases, states have ownership of water and have the right to be making contracts with corporations to sell this resource. And in many states, it's illegal to catch water on your, on your property. So when it rains, you can't have a rain barrel, for example, it's against the law or it's against the law to be able to um, create water catchment like ponds or whatever on, on a property because the, the water is meant to be flowing down uh, certain waterways so that it can feed dams, for example. Um, and um, and it, we don't have rights to our own, to, to water from, from the sky, which is really quite remarkable and kind of crazy, right? Because that means that um, we, we don't get to uh, grow our landscape. We don't get to replenish the earth. Where this is coming from is, um, an awareness of a, an organization called Water Stories, which I can't advocate for enough. Um, in the Sustainability Now podcast uh, and movie night this week, our, our movie night is with this remarkable man named Zach Weiss. And um, 
Zach Weiss has created this organization called Water Stories, which is teaching people about the water cycle and about what we can do to be transforming the water cycle, to be transforming the planet, to be turning deserts into lush and verdant landscapes. Um, I'm just taking a minute to, um, to put a post on the Facebook page to let people know what's happening. I don't know why this isn't showing up. Um, I'm just posting it here, sorry. Okay, so um, when there's, there's kind of an absurdity that we accept, you know, we somehow accept this notion that, that resources can be owned, that our public lands, for instance, that, that corporations can buy rights to be extracting all kinds of resources from public lands or that um, that water, for instance, can be owned. And so as a result, for instance, in California, water rights were sold to, I don't know if it was Nestle or another one of the water companies. And during the drought, uh, who had the water? Nestle. They took all this water for a nominal price, they bottled it and then sold it and people were experiencing a horrible drought. So, I mean, this is, this is the height of absurdity that we could be um, commoditizing water, that we commoditize the resources of the earth and then they become owned by corporate interests. It's, it's craziness, right? It's craziness to think that um, that we can allow big corporations to be uh, extracting fossil fuel from the earth and destroying communities and polluting waterways and um, polluting communities uh, with and having and having uh, the right to. Um, take ownership of land that might be in the path of these these oil um, pipelines. It's crazy, right? It's crazy that the the oil companies would have uh, sovereign uh, or would have power over individuals and communities and and the populace, the, it's crazy, and yet we accept it. And we even com condone and promote it because we have been uh, hypnotized to believe that it's for the greater good. You know, that, that of course that's how things work. It's okay that, that um, business can pollute and uh, destroy the welfare of communities, to destroy the quality of air, to destroy the quality of water, uh, because to stop them would be impeding their ability to do business and to make profit. There are actually international laws that try to enforce the right of a corporation to sue a community or a country for impeding their, their ability to pursue business despite whatever the consequence is to the community. These, these fundamental assumptions are things that we don't even call into question. It's part of our day-to-day our -day 
existence. I mean, the, the idea that a company like Monsanto, now owned by Bayer, like Bayer Aspirin Bayer, could own, own seeds, own genetically engineered, they, they've taken seeds, they've engineered them or you know, modified them, and then they patent that and have ownership of this with the intention to own a food supply. The, the fact that we have enabled such a practice is patently absurd, and yet we don't seem to question these things. Um, the, that we've been so swept up in this notion of, of ownership and what we call free market and free enterprise that has completely run amok and, um, and truly usurped the right to a safe environment. Um, you know, the, the, the human right to air, clean air, clean water, a healthful environment, a livable climate, you know, that there's no consequence for these companies that have been devastating our, our planet and our, um, our well-being in so many ways. You know, we, we have bought into so many truly, truly crazy assumptions uh, that we get to question, you know, we get to stop and step back and say, well, wait a minute, what is it that's going on here? What, what is happening here? And, and how did we get to this place? And how do we undo it? What, what can we do to shift this experience? Um, it's, it's craziness. And um, I, I encourage us to awaken from the thrall of this, this idea that, you know, some of us see that the emperor has no clothes, right? Or we've all, we, we've all begun to believe that the emperor's clothes are just invisible, you know, because they're so light and they're so, um, so perfect in its way, right? And, and so we don't call it out. It, it takes the eye of a child to step back and say, oh my gosh, what is it that's happening here? You know, th what is this absurdity that we have come to accept as our norm? You know, um, it's, it's true insanity. So, um, I I think I'm going to cut this short because it doesn't look like it's being broadcast and uh, the comments aren't working and there's some technical difficulties. So I'm just going to revisit this on another day with you and um, we get to discuss it together. So, so much love to you.